let me pick up on that last point you made about the blot on economics. Let me take it back to the classroom. How much of this do you think is, can be traced back to how economics is taught today? And what do you think are the flaws of economics teaching and how can it be fixed? I think the uh, flaws start with economic reasoning, uh, which is issues like uh, the personal budget constraint, the fact that uh, the role of government is an exception taught later in the course, not the rule, the idea that entitlements are not entitlements to uh, what we need for decent lives, but somehow entitlements of a budget that are whatever they are. A lot of it starts with Locke, who I have decided is one of my least favorite philosophers uh, in my uh, this stage of my life. Uh, it took me decades to reread the second treatise on government, but uh, I really was deeply unmoved by it uh, the second time around, very deeply annoyed by it. Uh, I don't really, and there's a big debate about Locke. It's a divided literature among Locke scholars, uh, whether how much to blame, how much to credit uh, and so forth. But I believe that uh, this philosophy that private property is absolutely sacrosanct is a uh, inexplicit vision of our society and translated into uh, translated uh, into our economic thinking and our textbooks and uh, our ways of approaching uh, these issues and our mindsets. I certainly did not understand these issues myself uh, for a long time, the kind of uh, hidden role that uh, these assumptions uh, play in how we're trained. But I did have enough intuition and enough guidance to uh, know that something was wrong 36 years ago when I was advising Bolivia, because I said, Let, we have to cancel the debts of this country, otherwise it's going to be continuing in impoverishment. No, no, that's against the rules. Uh, and uh, I was viewed as cheating. You know, what kind of economist solves a problem by canceling the debt? Uh, you know, that's a shortcut. You're not allowed to do that. Your goal as a development economist is to get them to repay the debt and honor their contracts and, and all the rest. Uh, so uh, um, I, find, I found that at the time wrong, but I had guidance then, I had help which was uh, John Maynard Keynes writing about these topics, uh, especially reparations and the economic consequences of the peace, mm. when he said it would be disastrous to take a letter of a treaty or a letter of a contract and end up with social deprivation and social upheaval. And so we should look to the consequences of what we're doing. Uh, and it took me a while to understand that it's also wildly inconsistent with the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which has made clear that it is a human right for every person on this planet to have access to healthcare, education, social protection, social security, decent livelihoods. Now, how seriously do we take that? <laughs> Not at all, but it's actually the founding moral document of the United Nations. So I think we should take it seriously. So I don't think we do our students much of a favor. That's why you and I are teaching a different kind of class to explain that these are uh, hidden assumptions. Uh, they need to be spelled out clearly. Uh, we should understand how societies really operate. We should look at the ones that operate relatively well and understand what they do. And I'm reviewing basic economic texts now as part of our course, and I'm not moved by them because the basic economic texts uh, have all of the, these questions as 
basically uh, footnotes uh, or boxes uh, after the main idea, uh, which is that the market system is good, fine, property rights uh, are central, and there can be some exceptions, see box one. Uh, and I don't think that that's actually doing service to these issues. <laughs>